Hi everyone, welcome to another video, hope you're all keeping well. Uh, this is another request video for Oliver Gold, I've eventually got round to doing it and don't worry I will do Pendennis Castle as well when I get round to it. So on to the Flying Scotsman, which started life as just another of Sir Nigel Gresley's A1 class of locomotives but is now considered the most famous locomotive in the world. How did it get there? The key facts about it was it was built in 1923 at Doncaster Works, costing £7,944,000. If you're interested in buying it now, that's around about half a million if you've got that spare. It weighs 97 tonnes, the length is 70 feet, and was officially the first locomotive to reach 100 mile per hour and the first to circumnavigate the globe. It holds the world record for a non-stop run in a steam locomotive set in 1989 with a 422 mile trip. Some of this which we will touch upon again in a min. So, where did it all begin? The Flying Scotsman was built in Doncaster, the first locomotive of the newly formed London and North Eastern Railway. It went into service on the 24th of February 1923 with number 1472. It was designed by Sir Nigel Gresley as part of the A1 class, the most powerful locomotives used by the LNER at the time. By 1924, when it was selected to appear in the British Empire exhibition in London, the loco had been renumbered 4472 and had been given the name Flying Scotsman after the daily 10 o'clock London to Edinburgh rail service which started in 1862. The British Empire exhibition made Flying Scotsman famous and it went on to feature in many more publicity events for the LNER. In 1928 it was given a new type of tender with a corridor which meant that a new crew could take over without stopping the train. This allowed it to haul the first ever non-stop London to Edinburgh service on the 1st of January that year reducing the journey time to 8 hours. In 1934, Scotsman was clocked at 100 miles per hour on a test run, officially the first locomotive in the UK to reach that speed. The test run proved to the LNER directors that steam power could provide high speeds, negating a plan for the company to use diesel power on its high speed services. LNER passenger locomotives had always been painted apple green. However, during the Second World War, the Flying Scotsman was repainted in wartime black, in common with all railway stock. After the war, it became green again and was rebuilt as an A3 Pacific. I got that out eventually. In 1948, British Railways was 